Oh, hello there, viewer. Are you as crappy at FIFA as me? Probably not. But do you still want awesome rewards? Of course you do. Well, give up on Weekend League. You're trash. Come on, let's just be honest with ourselves. Everyone and their mama wants to date Selena Gomez. But only Weekend gets her. You're not DJ Jarba. You're not Gorilla. You're not getting anywhere near those top 100 rewards. Give up on Weekend League. But Cindy and Calculus, though, she's cute. And best of all, she is attainable. And that is what Squad Battles is this year. It is Cindy from Calculus. The rewards, while not as sexy as a Selena Gomez, it's still cute and it has nice boobs like Cindy from Calculus. And if you can muster at least Elite 2, that'll earn you 25,000 coins and two mega packs. That might not sound like a lot, but uh, I'll cut to the footage of what I got last week in my mega packs. Come on, French, CDM, Chelsea, please. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, pretty good, right? Best card I've pulled all year. And uh, if all things considered, if you've ever watched my channel or if you're new, I'm not a very good FIFA player. Hell, I'm American. And if someone as shit at the game can go ahead and at least muster Elite 2, you can do it. And that is what this video is all about. I'm going to be teaching you all the best tips and tactics from formations, from personnel, to chemistry styles, okay, to in-game okay. tricks and tips. I'm okay. going to give you the full over dummies guide to get at least Elite 2, Elite 1 rewards in squad battles. And if Elite Rewards sounds like something you'd be interested in, go ahead, smush your hard erect nipples into that like button, and subscribe for more squad battles goodness on this channel. And without further ado, let us... Begin. First and foremost, let's talk formation. As you can see right here, we're in the 451 first variant. This is the one with the two camps, the left mid, the right mid, one CM, back four, and then a lone striker up top. Now, full disclosure, I learned about this formation from another YouTuber who already put out a, a very in-depth guide on what he uses for this formation. I want to shout him out right now. His name is in the garden of Jack. He only has around like 300 subscribers. So go ahead, hit up the I think is right here. Click on that video. He'll go more into depth with it if you want to learn more about it. And uh, subscribe to him. Let's get this up. Let's get subs up. All right, let's first go into player instructions. Uh, for your lone striker, you want to have them on state central and in false nine. In this formation with the two cams split out on the right and the left, the striker can get a little bit isolated. So it's good to put him on um, uh, false nine to come and collect and kind of play more of a central cam rule and help distribute the ball. Uh, moving on to the two cams, you can put them on basic for everything. Although if you're starting out and you're conceding a lot of goals, then I would suggest that on defense defensive support you can go ahead and put them on comeback on defense and even if that's not working then for um, support on crosses I would put place them on stay on the edge of the box this way they don't commit when crosses come into the box and thus you're less susceptible on counter attacks now the wingers probably the most important instructions that you're going to use right here very crucial stay wide on the chance creation and get in behind this is crucial for what you're trying to do in this formation because of space you want them to stay nice fat and wide so that uh, basically uh, the fullback has to make a decision either mark your overlapping winger or mark your cam and that is what you want you want them to mark your cam thus allowing for your wingers to overlap and then one through ball bam they're in on a one-on-one goal goal scoring opportunity like now for the cm he's pretty much playing in a cdm role you're gonna have him on stay back while attacking and then also on stay on the edge for the cross thus so that he doesn't overcommit and is less susceptible on counterattacks. everyone else you pretty much have on default um I honestly wouldn't suggest always overlap on your fullbacks, especially if you have like a budget team. You want them to conserve their energy and be able to get back. Next thing that we're gonna talk about is the personnel. You already see the team on the screen and I've created this cheap budget BPL side. No player on this list is over 2,000. In fact, I think the most expensive is Wayne Rooney in here. We bought him for 2,000. But everyone else, as you can see, like Defoe is 700. Klassen is 750. Uh, everyone else in here you can get on a budget. I would say easily this full team is well under 30k. And anyone who's been playing the game for more than a week, you know, yeah, I got a couple of coin boosts, you can afford this team. 
Now that's not to say that this formation can't be played with pretty much anyone, but it's most effective if you have the right personnel. So uh, I would say it's crucial that for your wingers, you've got someone who's pacey and can shoot. And if they can pass, it's a little bit of a bonus. So Riyad Mahrez is a excellent, excellent choice. As you can see right here, we're able to grab him for a poultry 1,500. And he's got decent enough pace, you know, like 80 sprint speed, 85 acceleration. And what you like about him is his finishing up at 74 and his short passing at 78. Now, as you can see, he's got five star skill moves, three star weak foot, but he is left footed. Now, the big thing about that is once you get into the game, you want to switch him with Kevin Morales, who is right footed. And the reason why is the majority of times when they are in on goal, you want them to deliver a crossbody driven shot. And that's probably going to be scoring the majority of your goals using this formation. As you can see, Kevin Morales, we bought for 1,100 coins. Uh, he's got a four star weak foot, so you can keep them on the sides that they naturally play as, but you're just going to be that much more deadly if you can have them power low driven on their preferred foot. As you can see right here, his finishing is relatively high for a winger, 77, uh, acceleration, 82, sprint speed, 84, and he's got decent short passing at 80. Very, very nice. As you haven't noticed already, the chem styles that we placed on all of our cams, all of our wingers is dead eye. That is the chemistry style that super ups both of their passing and their shooting. That is what you want. <laughs> well, pace is nice. I don't think it's really everything. Honestly, if you're gonna use the instructions and this formation, you're probably gonna get maybe three, maybe four decent chances in on net with your wingers. And that is why instead of having, you know, uh, just that much more pace, I'd rather have them finish their shots. Same thing with our cam. As you can see right here, there's a certain archetype of cam that you like and Wayne Rooney exemplifies that. He isn't the fastest, but what he does have is good physical, good shooting, and good passing. We'd go ahead and take a look at his attributes. As I said, he's not the paciest, but his finishing is up at 80, his short passing is up at 81, and his strength and aggression are above 80 as well. The reason why this is the archetype that you're looking for is one, he's going to be the guy delivering that killer through ball, and secondly, he's going to be tracking back when you lose the ball and be one of your main ball winners. Also, on occasion, he's going to get in position to score, and when he's in front of net, you want someone confident enough to put in the back of it. His teammate over at Everton is rather similar. David Clausen, who we bought only for 750 coins. As you can see right here, his attributes are pretty similar. He's got the same acceleration speed, and his strength, while not quite as strong, is still pretty high, and he's got excellent stamina at 92, short passing of 83, and a finishing of 82. At the striker position, you want someone who's clinical. Uh, honestly, you could go for a myriad of people. I tried out a bunch of, uh, you know, discount strikers. Gabbiadini is nice because he's a little bit taller, a little bit stronger. Uh, Defoe is good because just look, he's got 87 finishing. And the majority of the time, you're not going to be working too much or using too much of your striker. He's going to kind of be posting up and then just get a ball delivered to his feet. And when that happens, he just needs to, to tap it in right in front of that. And with that, I can't ask much for more than, you know, 87 positioning and 87 finishing with 88 shot power and Defoe. It's kind of up to you. There are a number of discount strikers that, uh, you know, I liked using. Gabadini was nice. I actually probably prefer uh, Andre Gray just because that pace does offer a little bit more on counterattacks. As you can see, he can be bought for 850 coins and his pace is outstanding, 89 with 90 acceleration, finishing not quite as high, but still decent enough positioning and shot power and strength at 81 is definitely a plus in the box so he doesn't get bowled over before he gets his shot off. At the CDM position, probably the steal of, of this team. Uh, shout out to Channy Sports for recommending this guy. But Rogue Mesa, what a god, that's like a Star Wars name. Bought for 650 coins. And just check out this guy's stats. While he isn't the tallest, I love his high, high work rate. So he's going to be flying all over the pitch. And then if you take a look at his acceleration, his sprint speed, and then his marking, sand tackling, slide tackling, good stamina, and good aggression. And look at that short passing, 89 short passing, and still can actually finish a bit from the CDM position. You just take a look at these sets, he's basically a discount Conte with a little bit better finishing. You know, his strength isn't that high, but I think if you slap like an anchor on him to get his physical up, I think he would be an absolute beast. At left back, I went for Arthur Masuaku. 
Uh, as you can see, he's bought for 750 coins. He's decent, you know, he's got excellent pace, uh, you know, decent strength, decent finishing, and then what I like about him is, you know, 71 short passing, and he's got a little bit of finishing on him if you really want him to. On the other side, I opted for Zappacosta from Chelsea. He's got high, high work rates as well, and he's six foot tall, so if there are any crosses to the back post, he's gonna be there for you. Um, his pace isn't the highest. He's got good, uh, you know, sprint speed, but the lower end acceleration is never all too high, but for the price, it's pretty hard to beat, and he's very, very stable uh, defensively. Center backs that I went for is Winston Reed, six foot three, wins everything in the air. That's what I like about him. Not quite the fastest, but look at that. Good stand tackle, good slide tackling. Not the best marking, but excellent um, heading accuracy. And the other one, the more athletic ball winner is Davidson Sanchez of Tottenham. I should go ahead and take a look at his attributes. Pretty darn athletic, pretty good acceleration. And look at that, dark greens and heading accuracy, marking, stand tackle, and slide tackle. And last, uh, honestly, Joe Hart, this is going to be strange, but Joe Hart bought for 950 coins has been the best keeper that uh, that I've used. <laughs> and, like the main reason is that keepers are somewhat broken in this game, but he's six foot five. Any keeper that is over six foot five in this game is good. So there you go. Not the best handling stat, but you know, you go ahead, you slap a, a glove chemistry style on him and he's, he's solid. Now on the bench, you got a few super subs, but this is what I like to do with substitutions. Around the 60th minute or beyond, when your midfield is starting to tire, that trio of Claussen, Rooney, and Mesa, this is what I do. I bring in Walcott for Claussen. I take out Rogue Mesa, and I bring in Sissoko, and then I bring in Andre Gray for Rooney. And you might not believe this, but I do this for defensive purposes. <laughs> The reason why, and especially why Andre Gray is great in this position, is you take a look at his physical stats and his pace. With 89 sprint speed and 90 acceleration, and then 81 strength, he is able to run down even Ronaldo <laughs> past the 60th minute mark and win the ball back. Because as long as you have decent strength, it doesn't really matter about your sand tackle or your marking. Late in games, you just barge into the guy, and the refs don't really call anything anymore in this FIFA. You win the ball back, and then you got Walcott, Sissoko, and Andre Gay bombing up the pitch on a counterattack, so you know they're effective that doing that as well. Same thing with Walcott, but if you can find like another player that it's in the same mold of an Andre Gray, someone who's really fast but's got good physicals as well, you know, players like Vardy, like Rashford, those are the type of players. Or Antonio, those are the type of players that I would go ahead and bring in late in games. It sounds counterintuitive, but trust me. Now let's move on to some real game examples right here, and I'll explain to you the strategies and my mentality when I'm attacking. As you can see right here, you wanna be playing the ball across the formation and then into one of your camps, either Claussen or Rooney. And the reason for this is you want the fullback of the opposition team to make a decision. Does he press up and mark your cam? And that's exactly what you want them to do. Once they take that one step up, you can see that Mares or Morales is gonna be hitting it with an overlap and you're gonna play the through ball in and then he's gonna have a brilliant chance one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Hopefully, you have enough time to deliver a low driven shot across the body and that is why you want a right-footed player on the right side and a left-footed player on the left side. Uh, but if you don't have the time, which does occur, then you know maybe a power shot is your best option. It's not always gonna result in a goal, not as a high percentage, but it's better than getting your shot blocked. By the time that they move up to try to mark your cam, it's already too late. Their momentum is going to be carrying them too far past. They can't recover. And as you can see right here, as uh, in this example, the ball is played in to Claussen. The overlap is made by Morales. And there is just so much space in behind that Morales has actually has the opportunity to slow down, actually release the sprint button, and then curl it a finesse shot into the top right hand corner. Very, very nice. And if you can, that's another tip. Uh, if you can lay off of the sprint before you shoot, it'll just make you that much more effective. And hence, while you go ahead and you have the dead eye on there, because when you get into these positions, you want them to be finishing. It's worth the 200 coins that you can snipe that chemistry style for. Now, let's say they actually pick up on your trick and they start marking your winger. There's no way that you can get in without getting bullied, and that's when you would use your secondary weapon in this very, very simple to use, and that is the fake shot stop. 
to perform the fake shot stop, you hit X and then you slide your finger to A really quickly. So it's da da. That's how quickly it has to be without holding a direction on any of your directional sticks. That'll bring your player to do a fake shot and then a complete stop. Hopefully the defender's momentum carries them past you and then without holding the sprint button, you want to move backwards toward the halfway line just genuinely and then as you're doing this you're going to be looking for either your striker to peel off into a, a you know a nice position or one of your cams to make a run into the box you deliver a simple a ball and for some reason it's extremely hard for the computer to mark this a ball even if they're in the correct positions and most of the time it'll go ahead and find one of your teammates and you want to tap that ball in far away from the keeper. This is another example, and you kinda wanna use this anytime you're in the final third. If you feel like they're closing you down, you go ahead, you do the fake shot, you pull back a little, and then you do that simple A cross once again, another finish. Now, of course, there are gonna be other ways for you to score in this formation besides these two. Hopefully you have a decent enough build-up game and you can see certain passes and certain situations on the counter, but, these two methods are going to be your bread and butter. Now, on to build up play. And the biggest thing that I can stress here is to be patient. Pass the ball around. Do not be afraid to pass the ball backwards and across the formation. If a pass lane is being closed down, if you see your runner moving into an inadvantageous position that will get closed down, don't force the pass. Just hold onto the ball keep possession don't feel the pressure of the score line as long as you have the ball the other team cannot score and it's gonna be a battle sometimes to get that first goal or to go ahead and come from behind but trust me as long as you're patient as long as you maintain possession eventually the CPU will make a mistake and that is when you pounce the same virtues of patience apply to defense because the CPU usually nine times out of ten will make a mistake and give the ball back to you rather easily. Now, if you're having problems on defending, I have a huge trick to improve your D. You've probably seen this on another couple of videos, and once again, I'm taking this from another YouTuber, a good friend of mine actually, Full Metal Zoe, who figured this out. If you go into your settings and then you go into customize control, if you scroll down on the controller settings, go all the way down, and as you can see right here, defending is gonna be on tactical defending. You wanna switch that over to legacy defending. And then once you switch it over to Legacy Defending, you're going to go over two clicks over to Defense. You're going to see that secondary press. You want to go ahead and you want to put that on right bumper. When you hold down A, your gun's going to go ahead and run down the opponent. And then if you hold RB or R1 on a PlayStation and hold A at the same time, you're going to two-man press the ball wherever it goes. And this is exactly what you want to do the moment you lose possession. You want to go ahead, click over to the nearest man and start two man pressing them, trying to hunt them down. Hopefully you're up on their hip and then you click over to the other guy and then try to hit the A, you know, mash A and try to steal the ball off of them. And I also want to preface this, Full Metal says, said this, if you're struggling with legacy, don't switch back right away. Give it a chance because it there is, I would say, like a two to three game learning curve to go ahead and get used to this type of defending. Now here's a crucial thing, you want to be doing the two man press in their own half at the midway point, but the moment the CPU reaches your final third, release the second man press and just try to go ahead and defend manually. If possible, don't use any of your defenders or fullbacks, you want to keep them in their position because the moment that you go ahead and click on one of them, you're probably going to drive them out of position. The CPU is going to see that and exploit that space. More often than not, it's going to lead to a goal. Try to find one of your wingers, even your striker, but preferably your CDM and your CMs to go ahead, chase down the opponent right up on their hip and steal the ball off of them by bullying them physically. Now this method isn't foolproof. There are going to be times that you just concede a goal either to AI bullshit, they bring on Ronaldo as a sub and there's, you know, you're just bouncing off of them. There, there's going to be issues, but by using this legacy defending, by getting used to this legacy defending, I can guarantee that if you were, you know, probably conceding like four to five goals per game, we could probably get that down to one or two. And more often than not, you'll find a lot of clean sheets using this method. Especially for lower skilled players like myself, uh, once you get used to this, it is a godsend. And I would say, you know, if you don't want to risk your points for this week, hop in 
on legendary on career mode and go ahead and try to learn your angles and how to defend with the legacy defending. Now my next tip is pride is your enemy at times. If you are still struggling with like the uber teams, you know, like the 84 rated god teams that have 100 chemistry and you know that no matter what, you're probably gonna see three or four goals, then just don't play them on legendary. No one really cares if you're playing on legendary or not. What people do care is if you're smashing and grabbing yourself a pawbo with those awesome elite one rewards. So if you see you're sitting, you know, comfortably in elite two, elite one, and a, a loss would really hurt you and you got that final god spot with a hundred cam staring you in the face, knock it down to world class. Beat them up for six goals because they are substantially easier, especially if you use these methods. And that'll go ahead and net you probably, you know, 1600, 1500 points, which is substantially more than, you know, the 400, 500 you would get <laughs> from getting smashed on by that team. Hell, even if you barely scrape out a win on that team, you'll still only get, you know, 1800 points, which is only about like 200, 300 more. In the grand scheme of things, it's not super gonna help you. Same thing with the featured squads, you know, they have the 99 rated players. Just nobody cares, bro. Just go ahead, knock it down to world class, get your 1600 points, and run. Now moving on to custom tactics, these work for me. They might not work for you because just custom tactics are kind of funky like that. But for me, I like to put the speed up at 70, the passing up at 45 and keep it on organized. For chance creation at like 65, I feel like it's a good balance. And then for crossing, I like 90. The irony about this is that I never cross. I never actually hit the B button. I don't even do the low driven cross. The reason why I put the crossing up to 90 is I want people making runs into the box when I'm on the wings. That's when I go ahead, I do the fake shot, I drag it back, and then when I see the runs or they present to me, I go ahead deliver an A pass, just a ground A pass into their feet to go ahead and score some easy goals. Shooting I put on 50 and I put on free form. And then defense, I like to put it up on high pressure. Personally, I want to win the ball in the midfield or in their third to start a counter instead of letting them get into your final third. So you want to be on 90, you want the aggression to be on 85, and you want to be two man pressing their ass for days. And now you can kind of see the strategy of why late in games, you would want someone like a Waka, someone like an Andre Gray or Sissoko in, because with that two man press, if you're getting two man pressed by Walcott and uh, like Andre Gray, you're not gonna have a lot of time on the ball. And if these custom tactics don't work for you, then I suggest that you go ahead and you start from the ground up. Move everything up to 50, 50, 50, and just play the game from there and adjust, you know, tweaking, you know, five, 10 in certain directions at a time until you find the custom tactics that work for you. As for in-game tactics, I mean, that's, it's kind of up to you. The general here is you need to adjust to the situation accordingly. Um, the brilliant thing about FIFA this year and what's compelling about squad battles is that every single team presents a new challenge. You can't have the same solution for every single formation, for all the same personnel. You need to kind of see how the game flow is going and thus adjust. If you're being high pressed too much and you can't find the outlet, then you might want to move it back into possession. If you aren't getting enough forward runs, then I would switch it up to long ball. If you're up by like two goals and you want to get a couple more late in the game, then high press, I feel like, would be your friend. Now, I know what I talked about was a lot to digest here. So, I, I, I suggest just bookmark this page, you know, leave a like if you can, and then just come back and, you know, refresh yourself, go over a couple of these concepts. And, and the biggest thing is, if it doesn't work right away, don't get discouraged. Practice makes perfect but trust me man just go ahead give this formation give these tactics a week play around with them and you will start to see results and i'm not gonna do anything cheap right here this is proof of the pudding this is me using the squad that i showcased to you in this uh you know in this video defeating one of the god spots this is an 84 rated 100 cam team and as you can see it was cagey i will admit uh it took us it took us into overtime as i said i am not a very good player but we go ahead we score the breakthrough goal and then usually late in games once you have the breakthrough the computer goes on all out attack especially late in games and that'll result in some really nice really easy late game counter attack goals follow these steps play all your games and i promise you you know if you keep it up if you stick with it you'll be opening up elite rewards and pulling contes in no time 
If you want more proof of this formation and its tactics and actions, go ahead, click over here, ding, and this is my squad battle series. Uh, I use the same formation. I use, you know, even worse personnel, and we usually come out with the dub. So if you want to see it more in practice, highly recommend you go ahead and click over here, ding. And if you want to see me go ahead and pull a Conte in that series, then I will check out this episode. It's a fun time. But anyway, my name is Be Modest. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Remember to say yourself, stay humble, and be weird. And every single day, the Fat Asian Nation, it grows. Ta-ta!